ウィーターズパーティアス変革への道はいこのセクションではミステンラブの創業者のエヴァン・チェンとオーカの森裕太郎さんとグレイス・クワンと、まあ、ディスカッションをしたいと思うんですけども And we'll switch to English.、Um, but first of all, I think one of the interesting things, and I, I'd love to kind of talk about, you know, and, and you can obviously ask your, each other's questions, but、um, I don't know. First of all, do you have any questions about Sui? And, and、uh, I'm curious if you, if you, what you think about it. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think it's incredibly exciting to see kind of more and more sophisticated and involved L1s, right? We've seen kind of this iteration. Uh, starting with Bitcoin and then with Ethereum. And you know, I, I do see kind of like Sui as kind of part of this next evolution.、Mm-hmm. And so I'm really excited to see what's going to come out of it.、Um, of course, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. And, and like, what would you be like as a, as a developer on blockchains? What would you want to see from Sui before you decided that you would actually try to write something in it? I guess, how would, how would you decide? I think there's a lot there because one thing, of course, as a developer is that there's clearly a lot of attention to kind of like、uh, a SUI and then also Aptos,、mm-hmm. right?、Mm-hmm. Way more than there was, for example, with Solana. Mm-hmm.、Um, mm-hmm. And so that's really a function of kind of like what has happened recently in the market.、Mm-hmm. And、mm-hmm. so that does make it a lot more crowded.、Mm-hmm. Um, and so. Crowded in being more developers? More developers. Yep, yep. And so I think as a developer, you know, if I, if I were to want to kind of like build on, on Sui, for example, I would want to like come in with an action, like a truly innovative idea.、Mm-hmm. And I would like to understand what allows Sui to kind of like, what is it, what is it kind of、uh, enable、mm-hmm. that allows me to like introduce an innovative idea、mm-hmm. that is not possible elsewhere?、Mm-hmm. And, and I guess that's a question. How do you pitch a developer that's thinking about your platform? Yeah, I mean, I think the best way is sort of by showing, right? And, and it's really, I think one of the challenges is people have、uh, understanding how blockchain works,、mm-hmm. right? And, and when you want to you know, sort of have a step function change, it's not always obvious,、mm-hmm. right? So,、uh, and words sometimes is hard. You know, you can't just. Describe new concepts sometimes with words, right? You have to、mm. do a better job explaining. So,、mm. so that's something we're working on.、Um, so, for us, right, it's really, and also there, there's usually too many narratives in the space, right? Everybody's like, we can solve p r o b l e m in this way, and that's、mm. the best way. And we don't want to do that, right?、Mm. We want to listen and understand、uh, what products people want to build. And how do we enable that? right? We like to work backwards, almost、mm-hmm. like,、mm-hmm. you know, tell me what you want to accomplish if、uh, the infrastructure is technology is not a bottleneck for you.、Mm-hmm. And then、mm-hmm. we'll tell you how we can support you.、Um, so, and, you know, that, that's happening.、Mm-hmm. And we're seeing that. We, we're seeing, you know, we're, we're getting this kind of a reputation now attracting the best developer、mm-hmm. coming out to our platform. People starting to understand, it's like, well, okay. Now, I can do things that cannot be done elsewhere. Right.、Yeah. Maybe it's a, you know, not, not a real product, it's just an experiment. Like a, a few days ago, one of the developer that's building a wallet that, you know, saying, hey, look at this. Now you can have a game inside the wallet and, and the, the game itself with all the states related to it. It's like, I'm, I'm playing this game and halfway through it, I, I'm done playing. I'm not, not interested anymore. That thing can be passed on to another person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a game with. The, the progress as an object. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everything can, can be passed on to someone else. And you could do this because it's object oriented and the u n c h a i n e d storage is big enough so the whole game can、right. be unchained. And all the、is、states、that? are there. And、right. All the states are there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And if you, obviously, that's not a product by itself, but if you generalize that concept, you can now imagine you can build all kinds of assets、mm-hmm. with all the history、mm-hmm. you know, encapsulated inca- there. Yep. And that can be transferred between people.、Yep. Right? Think about using that as,、uh, to represent your social graph in a social network.、Mm-hmm. Uh, that can be something that you take outside of the product and move on to another、mm-hmm. product. And that's exciting.、Right? So, the, you know, the, the thing that's exciting about the Web3 space is all this energy.、Mm-hmm. It makes it so easy for developers 
with some ideas to experiment and try. And then before you know it, you have a completely new concept, mm -hmm. something that hasn't been done before. And then the next step is mm -hmm. waiting to see how it being incorporated into a product that consumers mm -hmm. use, right? So our job is to bring the two sides mm -hmm. together uh, and, and telling the story, working with developers, part of that. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you think, and I don't think we know for sure, but do you, do you think that it's gonna be multiple blockchains or I guess the Cosmos people would say lots of application specific blockchains connected with inter blockchain communication protocol or do you think it will be one, is everybody gonna use three? Do, do cause, cause the internet by this time in its development, we had all kind of agreed on TCP IP as like yeah. one layer. But with the blockchain, I think it's confusing both for users and application developers that there are so many languages and so many blockchains. I mean, whether it's Sui or others, how do you think it's going to shake out and what's the best way for us to think about where it's going? I mean, power laws always applies, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be a few dominant players. It could be one, could be two. We, we don't really know. It's not going to be a long tail where everybody gets a slice of pie, right? Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. when we're still in this early stage, everybody's still learning experimentation, right? And as you say, there's no TCP IP yet where mm -hmm. everybody's standardized. Um, uh, so we'll see how it works, right? But we don't, I personally don't believe this world where there's going to be a, a hundred or even mm -hmm. 20 mm -hmm. blockchain that have substantial, mm -hmm. substantial business, right? So to speak, it's going to be a few power laws, and especially when you're thinking about what the, the fundamental value of a blockchain is for all these assets to live on the blockchain. So you can, you know, do things with them, right? Mm -hmm. You can trade assets for one asset for one, for the other, mm -hmm. right? Anytime you have fragmentation, you, you lose a lot of the mm -hmm. sort of the benefit. For, yes, you can move asset between blockchains. But as we've seen currently, bridging is a very, very scary place, right? That's when the weakest point. Mm -hmm. uh, so the answer is we don't know, but it, the, the history tend to mm -hmm. sort of rhymes. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's going to be something that look more like a power law. There will mm -hmm. be a few winners. Uh, and whether we standardize on one or not, mm -hmm. that remains to be seen. So then how do you think about folks like us who have already built applications on, say, Solana? Do you plan to try to incentivize developers to actually like move over to build mm -hmm. on both chains? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to announce our grant program uh, pretty soon. Um, you know, it, it's, and I think, I think one thing, we're, we're trying to t take things a little bit differently, right? And I think one of the challenges for 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 the developers that they're building on the in the blockchain space has been what's the sustainable business model, right? Mm. You know, and and I think how do your protocol capture value, right? Mm. Are you building a consumer facing product or you're building a product that should be part of a larger applications, right? These are the things that we we want to work with the developer community to figure out. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where you know there's going to be a lot a lot of different protocols, right? Just look at how many DEXs are there, right? All competing with each other. Um, you know, Uniswap is the, the big one, right? Again, power laws, right? They may have a sustainable business model, but for a lot of others, they don't have. Uh, so, you know, innovation is one thing, but if you think about the analogy I have is, you know, in, in the Web2 world, if you're a developer, you have a great idea, you um, let, let's even move a step back, right? In the old day, if you have a great audio compression codec, uh, you have a closed source algorithm and people license your software and you make money that way. Then moving to an open source world, you're trying to get people using them, then you build services around it because uh, otherwise people are just going to use you for free, but you build services around it and they make money that way. Mm -hmm. In this Web3 world, you're building a component, something like a protocol, and you hope people product use them or you build a product wrong it and the trick is how do you capture that value right is it from fees is it from governance tokens is it from other things and i think this this industry hasn't really figured out uh and and this is something we we're we have ideas we're thinking about right maybe the right model is to pair teams that focus on building products and building protocols together mm -hmm. you know or we think figuring out how how we can support uh, develop like you, um, you know, and how, the most important thing is how do you build a business around it, right? What's a business model? Uh, so I think incentive to get you to build is one thing, 
But I think this is a bigger problem, right? Because the incentive a grant program isn't going to be enough to sustain a long-term business. It may de-risk you, um, but what about one year from now? What about two years from now? Mm -hmm. um, so that's the probably the most more important problem to solve. And as a developer, I guess, if, as a DEX, you care about all the other pro applications on in that ecosystem, right? And and I guess that's also, I mean, the, your architecture is very different, say, than Cosmos, where it's a very, very decentralized community without really any central, I mean, comparatively, much less centralization. And, and you have, you said, nearly 100 people, and they come from a more traditional, probably, background than mm -hmm. um, blockchain people. I mean, do you think that flavor of the community is going to be really different or are you and, and are you recruiting a very different kind of core developer do you think or do you think that there you're going to be drawing from a lot of the current crypto community yeah we, we're drawing a lot from the current mm -hmm. crypto community uh you know and and even within the crypto community there, there's different yeah, yeah. persona right there there's some a bit more you know hey i want to be on everything every mm -hmm. chain Mm -hmm. uh, and there are songs that, okay, I want to, th this is something I want to build, I want to enable, and I w I'm looking for the best uh, partner, you know, best mm -hmm. platform to build. So there's different pla pl uh, flavors, and there, there's also more, you know, I just want to build a product, mm -hmm. right? And, and you know, blockchain is something I utilize. Mm -hmm. um, so so oh, we, we, we're talking to all kinds of developers, mm -hmm. uh, working with them in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're probably the only, uh, Platform right now has, for example, a solution engineering team mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we're building out because we we are working with a lot of bigger mm -hmm. companies. Uh, they don't want to say, how do I build a mm -hmm. smart contract to do something that should be pretty simple to do, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll we'll have people working with them, you know. But for you know more, you know, people writing smart contract building businesses like DApps. Uh, we have developer relation folks, right? Mm -hmm. That working with them to help them solve problems. Mm -hmm. So, you know, lots of different approach. It's it's all important for different reasons mm -hmm. and how we work with them all different. Mm -hmm. And have you guys thought of doing multi-chain or is that something I'm, I'm sure it's sort of in your, in what's, what, how would you decide and how do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, ultimately we're very chain agnostic. Mm -hmm. um, I I have like very deep ties with Ethereum. All mm -hmm. of my crypto friends mm -hmm. are on Ethereum. Yeah, yeah. Um, despite that, we're building on Solana just because uh, you know w we saw that there would be this like uh, thriving ecosystem mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. You know, if we anticipate a thriving ecosystem in Sui, why not? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so I am very interested to see kind of like uh, how Sui will evolve. And you know, we've been following it fairly closely. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So as a Solana developer, maybe not the biggest brain Solana developer, but still having dabbled, I think one of like the biggest challenges that I faced when trying to build the products that I wanted to build was how difficult it was to actually like access history on the blockchain, especially when block sizes are so small. Any thoughts on that? Uh, so it's, it's actually a great question. So we have a sparse replay uh, system, right? Because everything is object based, right? So all the blockchain is basically one giant state. You know, you find the block, you traverse a tree, you find the data you need, uh, or you rely on some indexer, which, you know, my understanding will cost you money, right? Because you, your reads become not free. Uh, here's even your wallet can be a, a, a sparse replay. What that means is like, if you, your products are working with these objects, right? If I have a game and I have a hundred characters, right? Each of the character will be an object. You just follow the history of these objects. Right, so now reads becomes very cheap. Um, so, because who cares about all the other states, right? So, so that's the big difference, right? It's not one giant state, it's lots and lots of small states. Only the states you care about, you only need to read them. Uh, so coming back to your questions, like what makes us different? These are the things that's very different. Um, but because the architecture is so different, there's a lot of these things we need to do a better job explaining to the developer community what that actually means for you. Um, you know, in this particular case, what that actually means for, say, uh, a game developer is they don't have to worry about the complexity, the expense of reading. They can literally just say, I'm just going to follow only the things I care about and their evolution, their history. 
for what it's worth, I think if you can pull it off, um, having the brand of being the most developer-centric blockchain would be a pretty good one. Go for it. <laughs> I mean, it mm -hmm. yeah, I mean that, yeah, that's right? ultimately key, what yeah. it is, right? You yeah. know, uh, th the analogy TCP/IP, right? Mm -hmm. TCP/IP, who cares, right? Yeah. Consumer don't care. Most consumer may have heard of it, so they don't care, right? Mm -hmm. Consumer only care about products. And the experience, right? And that's what we want to enable. Um, the winners in this should be product developers, right? The winners in Web3, the ones that shape Web3 are going to be the product builders. And mm -hmm. if we can enable the product builders to mm -hmm. unleash the creativity, we want. Mm -hmm. And to us, unleashing creativity means making, making easy for them to experiment. Mm -hmm. If developer have to think about, well, block space is expensive, I better not use it, right? Mm -hmm. I need to worry about experimentation, what if the system goes down, or what if it's too hard to you know, do all these things, you're not going to unleash your creativity. Creativity is unleashed when, you're, when it's boundless. Mm -hmm. You can just experiment, you just can try. Yeah. And that's what we believe in. And I think that's a good measure, actually, of good blockchains, because I think crappy ones are focused on the investor, right? Are focused on people who are buying the tokens. And I think the, the, the good blockchains in general are care about the community, care about the people actually working on the thing. And I think, um, I think that, that, that that's, I think that's a really good metric. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to see if there's any questions. Does anybody have any questions? I have this one. Oh, okay. Those are. Uh, I'm Yogin Kohama, uh, in a, a member of the uh, Henka community. Uh, thank you very much for, you know, uh, support, uh, suggestive uh, insight uh, in a very frank manner. I have a question. Uh, my question goes to the uh, Olga. And uh, uh, I think, you know, you've already uh, touched upon, you know, why you uh, choose uh, the uh, Solana. Uh, but uh, would you tell me us again uh, uh, what made you to choose Solana uh, to develop your product uh, on it? Then also, the, would you describe the major criteria to choose uh, blockchains? Uh, that would be appreciated. Sure. Uh, so <clears throat> um, I think there's two angles to this. One is the technology, and one is the market. So uh, maybe I'll just talk about the market first. Um, you know, at the time, the summer of 2020, um, there there was. People were very bearish on alternative L1s that were not Ethereum. You so, mean ETH killers? Exactly, ETH <laughs> killers. So, you know, basically 2000. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like um, EOS, you know, raised a billion dollar ICO. Um, Definity raised like a $200 million uh, private round in around 2018. Those are huge numbers, but they, they all flopped. And Ethereum was on a roll with like sushi swap and whatnot, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so everyone kind of like was overlooking alternative L1s. Um, and then there is a second aspect, which is technology. And I think basically uh, Solana was the first L1 that introduced like a step level improvement to Ethereum uh, while maintaining sufficient kind of like decentralization. And that's essentially kind of like the innovations that they made with the virtual machine and then uh, with uh, the P2P network. And so, I mean, that, that was basically it, kind of, you know, those two things, yeah. I guess I would actually add to that, though, that I think something that a lot of people miss when it comes to evaluation criteria that people use is actually, for crypto specifically, is just the team and belief in the team. Um, I think people like to pretend it's all about the technology, uh, but then actually when it comes down to it, something that really drew me to Solano is the fact that they were just real engineers who had built like very large networks at scale before. I think you get a lot of folks who are very like researcher mind or research minded in crypto who are like, check out my cool new consensus mechanism or like check out my cool white paper. Um, but I'm more interested in like, have you actually built a network that can scale? And that was something that they had. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, the team is very important too. You want to comment? I don't know. No, no, I, I, no I, I just find it interesting, right? Because uh, you know the no, I agree with you in, in a lot of ways. Solana is uh, one of the things they tout is uh, their their the virtual machine. Mm -hmm. It's using my code. Oh, really? <laughs> LVN. Uh, oh, oh, right. oh, LVN. It's yeah, actually yeah, fundamentally yeah, yeah. used. It rely on LVN, so yeah. it kind of comes 
full circle. No, no, it's great, yeah, right? Yeah. This is the power of open source. Yeah, right? yeah, they yeah. they could build their C level and all that sort of thing because they can compile, yeah. you know, thing into low level bytecode and That's execute great. them very fast. Yeah, yeah, and, excellent. And, yeah. Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Oh, Pisa? Yeah. Hello, my name is Ayari from Henkaku Community. I go by Ayafi on a Discord. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Um, I actually have a question to all of you. So, and when we talk about like Web3, there's like, I believe there's a lot of ways you could analyze this field, one of which is, of course, and technology. But because it's such a complex field, there's like a lot of things that I need to catch up before I truly understand what Web3 is. So I guess my question is, what kind of futures do you believe or wish to come in a couple um, next couple of years? Um, happy to take this, right? I hope in a couple of years, people okay. don't talk about Web3. People are just benefiting from it, right? So it's just something they're used to, right? So the product has changed in such a way they just, you know, for example, I keep on coming to this, right? The thing that drives me crazy using social networks is every time it's asking me to import my contacts. And then in the social network, I build all this relationship with people. Follow me, I follow them, and I cannot take that out. It has no meaning if I try to take it out. I cannot export it, right? My social graph is something I earned. It should have value outside the social network. I don't want to keep on exporting, importing my contacts mm -hmm. to every single one of these networks I use. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be an example I hope happens. People benefit from it. And nobody need to know has anything to do with blockchains or cryptos or anything like mm -hmm. that. Uh, and that will be amazing. And that's when this, there will be indication this field has matured and actually have benefit um, um, people. Um, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. I agree with that. And I guess I would build on it and say that what's desirable about crypto is not crypto right like i think at the end of the day it doesn't nobody's going to say like a world is going to be better if it has crypto i think like what's interesting and that's enabled by blockchains is generally i think falls into the category of around ownership um, transparency or access i think you know if you look at nft communities what's really interesting is that people in a very radical way actually own these assets right um, I think what's really interesting about blockchains as well is that they are very transparent. Anyone can actually like read all of this information. And as long as you have an internet connection, you can interact with these things. And so what I hope to see is a world that has technology that is much more radically accessible, that uses transparency in a positive way, I think, for accountability. And then also allows people to have radical ownership of their data. I think it's not just like the whole importing context thing, but like I want to be able to delete everything that I have on Facebook. And I don't think I really can, right? I can ask them to, but it's ultimately not up to me. I will, I will take a slightly cynical view, like take on this and say if it's a few years, as in like three or four, I actually don't think we'll make too much progress and like there won't be many changes. I think it'll take at least a decade until we start seeing kind of like real, real world use cases uh, coming out of crypto. Um, but I suppose in the next few years, um, a bull market would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that technology by itself doesn't change a lot unless you change the goals. So you can change if you don't. And I think the goals up till now with traditional capitalism was been the person with the most stuff wins and you were just optimizing for efficiency and growth. And I think that young people and a lot of people now believe that that's not the only reason why we're here. Better food, sustainability, equality. And I think that a lot of the Web3 community, the good pieces are kind of into uh, kind of resetting why we're here, the whole purpose. And I think what you measure changes what you can think. And I think if we think about, you know, the ledger 7,000 years ago, double entry bookkeeping 700 years ago, and now with blockchain and machine learning and things like that, we could actually, actually capture complexity and nuance that we couldn't with traditional accounting. So if we can capture that and we can think it, then we can make more nuanced goals. And so for me, what I think is that with double entry bookkeeping and traditional accounting, we got capitalism and this current form of sort of capitalist democracy. 
I think that we can change democracy and the economy to make it much more sort of nuanced, inclusive, and happier society. So, so for me, it's really unlocking the next phase in sort of human. So this is what I love, like I have Miyaguchi's sort of Ethereum Foundation thing about Ethereum being a protocol for human coordination. Right? And if we can make the protocol for human coordination better, so that society is better, then I think that that, and we're not talk, calling it Web3, we're just calling it sort of a next phase in our sort of evolution. I think that'd be great. I'm worried that the goals don't change and everybody just tries to optimize and maximize and we re-centralize and take all of the cool ideas about decentralization and just go back to trying to be more efficient. That's my concern. I think there's a pretty good chance that'll happen. Yeah, I was. you mentioned this when we were talking and I, I thought about it a little bit and um, I, I definitely share the same concerns. Mm -hmm. I think um, when, when I was originally involved in crypto, it was really just as a pure technologist uh, really just an engineer. Um, and I feel like the Ethereum Foundation did a great job of fostering that yeah, and kind yeah. of insulating all of the money that is in this mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, we are funded to, I'm sure you have experienced this, like it does kind of, it forces us to have to like change the way we think mm -hmm. um, just out of necessity. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it does like accelerate progress mm -hmm. and that is a good thing. But yeah, I, I do agree that like, it does kind of like almost have a corrupting influence. Yeah. And, and I don't think business is bad. I mean, I think that the cool thing about the internet when it works well is you've got these open stores and open protocols with businesses sandwiched between each protocol, scaling the thing. But when more and more of that business seeps into the protocol layers and then eliminates great ideas like free Wi-Fi and things like that just for app. I mean, the fact that we, all of our messengers don't talk, talk to each other and the fact that we're still paying the telephone company for cellular means that, you know, commerce is able to seep into those layers that could have been open. And I think that's my concern is that like, uh, yeah. So anyways, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and, and I think that keeping in mind why we have this open systems, I mean, I think that the, it's great. That, that, you know, LLVM is open source. And, and I think, and the, the other piece just as a meta, which is kind of interesting, I'd like to get your idea on this, is that, you know, we had a, I had a conversation with some other people about how, because of the, the sort of the, the money involved, open source became kind of like copy paste. And, you know, and there was like the sushi swap attack, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so then people stopped wanting to be as open source because it wasn't, there was more money involved. And it feels like now maybe, we're maybe trying to get to a next phase where we're trying to do open source again. I'm curious whether you think that, you know, open source is, is challenging in, in a world where people can just copy and start a, a competing project. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, you know, thinking about this, right. You know, the, we see this a lot, right. Mm -hmm. The, the, a lot of time, the, the people actually solve the hardest problem are not the one that benefit from it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. It's the aggregator. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the one that actually have the interface with the human, right? Or the or users. The, or, or the cloud, like right. Amazon. You right. Know, right. Yeah. They actually benefit from it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you come up with some cool algorithm that solve real problem and you produce open source code, you may not actually make as much money mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the, the company that, you know, who build a product wrapped around it mm -hmm. uh, and actually, you know, self, you know, have millions and millions of users. And we're probably going to see this again in AI, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. th that's already happening. Right. But, but that's the sort of the problems. dream though of composability is that we have audited smart contracts that people have used and then we get to copy and paste them and build things around them. Yeah, but, yeah. but it's not copy and paste, right? You're supposed right, right. to reuse supposed, that, that, right? right and that right. reuse that protocol and that protocols will be and the one better, that get right? the, yeah. the value. Uh, and that's a challenge. I think the sound, the, you know, this is why the community aspect is going to be very, very important, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the transparency of it, yeah. right? Yeah. The bad actors just copy and paste and then change your name right mm -hmm. should not be the one that benefit from it right mm -hmm. there should be some governance and so mm -hmm. some community pressures around this say don't do that mm -hmm. right if you don't actually produce your original ip you're not advancing the, mm -hmm. the you know the state are why would you be should be you be the one that benefit from mm -hmm. this right mm -hmm. but and i think this is part of it is just early right people mm -hmm. don't really know how to self-police right mm -hmm. and, and they don't really know and these protocol have again no sustainable business mm -hmm. model yet right so they create tokens and come up with ways to incentivize usage mm -hmm. 
-hmm. which actually a, a lot of way kind of goes against what they want to achieve. Let's mm -hmm. get these protocol being used mm -hmm. in in a way, right? Because whenever you introduce a new new tokens, actually it it's it makes it a little bit harder to adopt them. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are, but I think the transparency, the community aspect, mm -hmm. uh, could make a huge difference yeah. in this. And then the interpretability of that transparency. And I think this is where AI and other tools will develop that are important because yeah. transparency without any kind of yeah. um, any kind of inference analysis, you just end up yeah. with Twitter, right? And I think that's that's not what we want for our governance, right? Yeah. So thank you so much for this conversation and uh, of course. hopefully you'll inspire both developers and users in Japan and not all of them <laughs> run away to <laughs> overseas. Thank you.